right here and talk about what happens in Nevada. Now this is basically true of Las Vegas. We have this 100 year appreciation scale that shows that even though the market goes up and down, you know, as the years go by, over time, 100 years, we still only have appreciation of about 3.5 to 4.5%. Now, some of you that had RSVP'd, you gave your address uh, or an address of a property that you were interested in. What we did, and I'm hoping uh, Barry was able to get those to you when you came in, those will show you a market analysis of where your home is at. I don't have a, a, a graph of that on there, and maybe we'll get that implemented down the road. But the uh, paperwork that you have on that market analysis shows you a line, and everything below the line is the reality of what is actually closing in the market based on your specific property. And that is going to be a, a back look of about 12 months for your specific subdivision. When you look at that, if you've got a red box underneath that line, that's the most recent closing of the model match closest to your home. So I'm sorry if I'm giving some bad news out today, but that kind of tells you where your value would be if you sold it today. So the next question is, is how much do you owe your bank? If you owe more to your bank than where your value is, then you have a deficiency situation and your home is basically upside down. A lot of people um, uh, have been hearing the term underwater. That's, the con that's where the underwater is. Um, everything above that red line, by the way, is properties that are wanting to get sold, but they are pending, or they don't have an offer, or maybe they're contingent to some financing stipulation. And that information is there for you to see where the market is headed. So an easy example would be if you see your value is in a square box of 150, but the prices in the market to be sold are less than that, that means your neighborhood is still going down. If it's higher, your, your neighborhood may be going up a little bit based on what the buyers are willing to spend. All right, so we're going to talk about this stabilization period, which is probably going to be about a three-year time frame. And then we're going to talk about this growth period here, which is future appreciation. And that will probably be about, uh, we're going to just focus on a, a window period of about 10 years. So from today, stabilizing, getting into about 10 years out, where are we going to be based on three and a half to four and a half percent appreciation. And we're going to go ahead and use this figure here, but those of you that have your property reports in regards to the market values for your home, you can kind of apply your numbers, just replace your number with this number based on the today value, and it will show you over time about how much your property could go up. And again, I'm not here to say this is exact, uh, but what um, uh, I am here to say is this is basically my belief in regards to what the market is doing and what we're seeing now. So. Let's see, in regards to this here, over 10 years, this is growth, that's money being go or going back into someone's pocket. The goal and the hopes are that that's money that goes into your pocket. But if you bought here, let's say, at, two, at the 250 mark, or you owe that much, and you need to get out, and this is your 250 point, will the market be worth where you need it to be to be able to get that money out, or will you need another, that time to break even and then need another three years to just save the money to have the cost for that sale to go through. So cost of sale, this area right here, those costs of sale it includes the real estate costs. So a homeowner that has an equity position in their home, they would have to spend all the money it costs to sell the home. So the hopes are that the property goes up in value so they can afford the real estate agent, usually around 6 to 7%. Then you've also got the cost of closing for a seller, which is about 3, 3.5%. And then you also have, uh, in some cases, the buyer says, oh, I'd like some down payment assistance or closing cost assistance. And when they do that, you can add on another 3.5%. So we're talking about 12 percent, anywhere from 10 on the low to about 12 on the average of costs that you would need to gain in this extra time frame before you could actually sell the home and still break even if in the event that you're affected by being upside down. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. So again, we took 150000 We went for this three-year time frame and we basically took a payment of $1,200 to kind of give you some ideas of how much more money is going out of pocket during this upside down situation. Um, you add that up over the year, you got $14,400 annually that has come out of your pocket. Multiply that times the 10 years and that's $182,000 that had gone to the bank. So again, we're still here 
if you bought your property in, let's say, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and you're being affected that you're still above where you're going to balance out, you're basically giving this money to the bank and possibly not having anything to show for it in the end, other than a headache. So we're going to focus uh, back on the three and a half years stabilization, stabilization period and what some of the options are during this time frame now. Now, let's say that the home grew in equity, 100000 Well, if the home grows in equity and you still get to the point here and you're not able to afford the home or if it's still in an upside down situation, this is money that is technically in the pocket of the bank, even though you still stay in the home, if the home had to come back and collect on that house and you did everything that you could to try to make ends meet, continue to make your payments, etc., you're spending this much money over time, the equity growth is starting to come back, however, you can't afford your payments here or some people will take loan modifications and those loan mods will start to adjust and go up in, um, in payment again. And when those go up, the bank's goal is to basically get the home, take that money over the years of time, and take the instant equity growth back in their pocket in favor of their investor. So a lot of homeowners are like, wow, I was just thinking that I would stay in my home, try to do the right thing, this is the right thing, isn't it? Well, it is the right thing if you're listening to what your bank wants you to do, because it's the right thing for their investor, for sure. But this kind of gives you a little bit of a, an idea of what's actually happening. So when you add all that up, you've got roughly 282000 in this example on a property that was 150, trying to get back up to 350 to get that money back. There's that much money that will be bled out of that particular homeowner. Okay? So, again, do we take that chance or do we start focusing on, is it time to get out? And if we do get out, what is going to happen to me for my ramifications? How does it affect my credit? How do, um, does it affect my credit? If I keep making my payments and I try to get out now, what can I do to get